The T-110E3 is an American Tier 10 tank destroyer. It is incredibly strong on its hull down capabilities. Using its 8 degrees of gun depression, it basically looks like a giant tomato because it's just completely red. And that's a very similar case for the other vehicle we're going to be comparing to the E3 in today's video, being the FV-217 Badger. This tank doesn't have 8 degrees of gun depression, it has 10 degrees of gun depression. Using all 10 degrees, this tank is quite a menace to try and penetrate. It's also got a very good gun when it comes to damage per minute. Unfortunately, its accuracy can be a bit iffy when it actually comes to the hidden game statistics. In today's video, we are going to be breaking into everything you need to know about both of these tier 10 tank destroyers, which one I do think is a better overall tank, and how to deal with them on the battlefield. So let's start off with the Badger. Now the Badger is great in certain regards. When we start off with the statistics, the gun has 3,450 DPM, making it one of the highest DPM tier 10s in the game. Its dispersion at 0.299 is absolutely amazing, and when you add that in with the 3.3 seconds of aiming time, this vehicle is very accurate, or so you would think. But that is where a bit of an issue comes along with the Badger. If we go over to my display, you'll notice that this is the statistics of the E3's on movement dispersion. So when you turn the tank and when you move the vehicle, its dispersion is 0.2 on move, which means that your gun's going to bloom a little bit. If we look at the Badgers, it's 0.26. That is terrible. It is literally the same as an FE2 and 5B183. And this is actually supposed to be an accurate vehicle. So when you move or turn this vehicle, and judge that it doesn't have a turret yeah that's bad the badger's gun is terrible on the accuracy on move it really is it is one of the most annoying vehicles on the planet because you've got the super accurate base dispersion but when you're trying to shoot at anybody that's moving your gun has to bloom so it actually is not even close to being as accurate as wargaming states personally i believe that these values should be very good that way the badger actually feels like an accurate tank very similar to the at-15 the at-7 the tortoise but uh, hopefully one day they'll fix it. Either way, that is definitely one of the most irritating things I find about the Badger, is down to the fact that its gun is kind of good, but then it's also dog water at the same time because of those hidden statistics. But 8 seconds reload for 460 damage per shot, woof! That is a really, really good punch. 460 means that you're obviously not sitting at that lame 400, and you're also not sitting at too high of a damage where your reload becomes very long. So 460 is a very nice intermediate damage for the Badger to deal. 390 on the... APCR, but the HE at 550, I will be honest, that's quite lame. Other very similar calibers of 130-ish millimeters that deal 460 on the standard deal about 600 on the HE, but this is actually the same gun as the FE4005, just shoved into a single shot variant. It's kind of weird, I know, but uh, yeah, that is the weird thing about the Badger. I don't know why its HE doesn't deal 600. I also don't know why this vehicle doesn't have Hesh. It's another thing that very much annoys me about a British Tier 10 tank destroyer, but that is the Badger's gun statistics. When you make your way to mobility, it has a power to weight ratio of 15.1, boasting an average speed of 28, and a top speed of 34. So it's not the fastest of vehicles, but at least it can get up to a top speed of 34. When you go to the hull traverse speed, it's 28 degrees a second, which is quite bad, judging that, yeah, light tanks, medium tanks, if they get your tracks, they get your sides, it's not going to be a very fun endurance for you. I mean, when we take a look at the Badger, you'll notice that it's quite a large vehicle, especially compared to the size of the E3. It is probably about 23 30% larger than an E3, especially when you come to the sides and the rear. So that is one big disadvantage. When we make our way over to the armor profile, because obviously we want to take a look at it, I will say that the Badger has some pretty impressive armor. This is it frontally with an E3 using Cali and standard ammo. So that is 310 millimeters of standard penetration. And you'll notice that, yeah, the weakest parts of the Badger are incredibly thick at around 318 thick. Now, if you're using this thing fully hauled down, obviously the armor on the upper plate's not going to change, but premium shells from tank destroyers will pen it. So you can pen this here. It's about 370-ish, but that is an E3. I mean, if we were actually being honest here and we got out like an IS-4, you're not going to pen it. There's really no spot hole down you're going to penetrate the Badger. Its weakest parts are 380. I mean, that is incredibly thick when you do think about it, and that's not even angling it. So yeah, the Badger can be a very, very strong vehicle hull down, and if you use it correctly against tier 10 heavies, it's strong. Unfortunately, you don't ever really get to use 
reduce your full list of gun depression. So if you're only using like six degrees or so, then your armor does become quite poor as you can see. So that is one big disadvantage is you need to use all 10 degrees for the armor to actually be somewhat effective because as soon as you're not and you're on flat grounds, then yeah, these boobs become quite easy to penetrate. Now, if you're not running Cali, then you're out of luck because you're not going to pen it ever. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the armor of the Badger. Let's break into a replay. Being totally honest with you guys, the Badger is one of my least favorite tier 10s in the game. I have never liked it. I always wanted to love it, but I don't know. I just can't get the playstyle to fit with me. I'm an aggressive player, and it always seems to me like when I play the Badger aggressive, it either bleeds a lot or it just feels like a fish out of water. You're trying to play it all down and you can't fully work your gun depression. Let's say like on Mines Hill, you think, wow, Mines for a Badger, that's fantastic. Except you only need six degrees of gun depression to work Mines. So when you're using 10, your lower plate is exposed and then you get penned every time because this thing, let's face it, has a huge lower plate. So let's see what we can do here on Dead Rail. Now, Dead Rail is one of the few maps where I actually feel very calm in a Badger because you need almost your full 10 degrees of gun depression to actually work this hill. So there you go, nice shell into the enemy E100. With that, that guy's already down over 1,000 hit points in the first 40 seconds of that battle. I mean, that's <laughs> not great for him. What's sad though is even though he's down 1,000 hit points, he only has about 200 less than my full health Badger. Now, I will say, the great thing about this vehicle is the gun. Even in games where I feel like I'm not doing well and I'm going to die very quickly, the gun on this vehicle very, very quickly accommodates, and it can get out damage super quickly. In a frontline position, the Badger can rip apart that full health VK-72, that full health Chieftain Mark VI, in less than a minute. And if I'm running Adrenaline, which you can see I'm about to plop on here, I mean, this Mark VI literally stands no chance. So that Mark VI is backing up. That uh, VK-72 tried to take a shot, but unfortunately... That uh, Mark VI didn't really do a good job staying behind him, so I was able to get a second shell out. With that, we're sitting at already 1,900 damage dealt in this battle, and uh, we're through our adrenaline. So that's already good for us. Now we're aiming at this VK again. I'm just going to start loading premium shells. Obviously, the AP worked for that one shot, but it's not really worth it to risk it when I don't need to. So we're getting some nice shells out here, and oh, that guy's dead already. Let's get a nice premium shell into the E100's turret. We're sitting at 2,600 damage already. I mean, you can see just how quickly the Badger racks up the damage. Now, the WZ-113 pushed on my side, and that was just a weird, wonky shell there, wasn't it? I don't know what the heck Wargaming was trying to tell me with that shot. But either way, I got premium ammo loaded. We're going to make sure that that connects because I can't take any chances here. I need to clear the enemy opponents as quickly as possible. This AE, or the concept, I always confuse the concept in the AE phase one, but yeah, that concept got absolutely slapped by the tank destroyer. So that's why I'm being very, very cautious here. I'm reversing, 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 making sure that the tank destroyers don't have a view on me, making sure I've got those dead tanks blocking, and oh mama, I cannot tell you how worried, how, how worried I was that a 183 or some sort of tank destroyer was just going to slap me in the rear, but thankfully, that did not happen. Now, I'm loading premium shells on this 113 GFT. I know that that thing has incredibly strong upper plate armor, so it eh, might as well not take the risk and just load on the premium ammunition, so we've got some pretty nice taps on this vehicle over here, and yeah, I didn't really need a premium shell for that, but I mean, we still finished him off. He died, and that's obviously pretty good, so we're at 4,439 damage dealt. But there's still more hit points left in the enemy team. We got the fe 2 5 b 183 You can see there is the not-so-great on-movement dispersion. Whenever you move this vehicle, I mean, look at the size of that aiming circle. Every time I move the tank, I have to wait fully for it to aim back in. And for a vehicle that only goes, like, 35 kilometers per hour, it should not bloom that much. It really shouldn't. But this shell here, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what to say. That is all I gotta do. I mean, what the absolute hell. Wargaming might have heard my complaints, and they just said, Ha! Ha! You thought, and we hit that shell. Well, either way, that went through two train rails, and we were able to deal 5,700 damage, pulling out a mastery. You can see where the Badger does feel like a strong tank. Its gun is nice if it works. Its armor is nice if it works, but you need to use it in scenarios that really go well for you. The enemy wasn't shooting me. They were shooting my teammate in the Concept 1B, and I can very confidently say that if I was the one being shot, I probably would not have finished that battle very healthy, if with any health at all. I like the Badger in certain regards, but I also don't love it in others. But let's obviously break into to E3, and then I'll break into my overall opinion of both of these tanks.
The FV2 and 7 Badger and the E3 are very similar on the regard that they both have similar mobility and haul down capabilities, but the guns that these two tanks carry are extremely different. And if I'm going to be honest, the E3's gun is way, way more manageable. When we break into these statistics, it carries a 155 millimeter armament. It has 310 millimeters of penetration if you're running calibrated and 394 on the premium. That is enough to completely butter through any enemy opponents like nothing so that's great the penetration is not a problem on this vehicle when you come over to the dispersion at 0.326 with an aiming time of four seconds it's not awful because unlike the badger this tank actually has some pretty decent on movement dispersion and the actual base dispersion for how large of a caliber gun this is isn't terrible so as long as you're decent distance from your opponent you'll hit most of your shells when it comes to the damage per shot because this is such a large caliber it deals 640 and that rate Right there is where the Badger has its major downfall. The Badger is an 8 second reload. This has a 14 second reload. That is a 6 second reload difference. That means that you have to expose your E3 much, much less than the Badger. That also means that when you do expose your tank less, you're dealing more damage per shot. That is why I like the E3 more. Is that its hit points go further because you don't need to expose your tank to bleed more hit points a lot often. That is the big advantage. Sure, the Badger has the DPM, but you can't really use the DPM if you're bleeding all of your hit points in the process. The E3 doesn't have that as an issue. So the DPM, sure, it's 2754, 3000 if you're running gunner armor. It's about 450 less than the Badger, but it, it still feels like it does a lot more because of that alpha, especially the 960 on the HE. Woof! That HE, you're going to watch me do an HE shell in the battle that I'm going to show you. That is where the Badger feels incredibly weak compared to the HE on this tank. The gun depression is sitting at 8 degrees, which, as we went over, is plenty to work most ridge lines in the game. Now, mobility-wise, I will be honest, the E3 is much less enjoyable. It has an effective power-to-weight ratio of 8.3. Yes, I know that Blitz says it's 13.7, but this Blitz statistics isn't really true to what the in-game statistics are on the Blitz hangar, because obviously they show effective terrain resistances. When you add on terrain crossing capacity, this tank is much worse on its effective power to weight. It's around 8.3, making it one of the slowest overall tanks in tier 10. It's, it's horrific. Uh, you guys think the Titan TN is slow? Drive this tank with no speed boost. You will actually hate it. It's painful. So that's one big disadvantage. What isn't terrible is the traverse speed at 30 degrees a second over the 28 on the Badger. So that's not awful. And as well, the big advantage from this vehicle is the fact that it has the consumables. Improved engine power makes this tank tank better than the Badger by a long shot in my opinion. If we break over to the armor profile on both of these tanks, well this is the E3's armor profile. It's very strong. These are the two weakest spots right here. You'll notice when I load heat, those are really the only positions you'll penetrate the tank. I mean this is flat ground. When we looked at the Badger on flat ground, it was all penetrable on the upper plate. This tank, that's not the case. And when you're hull down, it's still very, very strong. Now the Badger is impervious hull down. This tank does have some weak spots right here and here. You can penetrate the the cheeks but it's also very hard to because the guns level is about here so you can still quite easily hide the cheeks on this vehicle and to be honest when people are having a 640 damage shell aiming at them that's usually the least of their worries trying to penetrate this tank they're more worried about not losing 640 hit points when it comes to the lower plate of this tank just like the badger it's quite weak you can penetrate it with most shells it's a lot more troll because of the angled parts here i can't tell you how many times i've hit this or this and just ricocheted a shell on the e3 but yeah frontally the e3 is very very strong and hull down wise it's incredibly strong and that uh, that weak spot on the roof it really isn't a weak spot people think it is but if you hit the roof of it it's going to bounce it's really just this little itty bitty center part here that you can penetrate everything else is not going to pen so yeah the e3 is very strong when it comes to that regard so now let's break into a, a replay and see which tank does do a better overall job now, this battle on Nube here was quite a hectic one and quite an annoying one for the E3. And I'll be honest, if I was in the Badger, there is no way I would have survived this battle. The only reason I managed to survive this game was because Speed Boost was on my side. So what do we have up against us? Well, we got an E50M, Object 268, Sheridan, uh, Sheridan. You're going to see why. A lot of you questioned why I had the Sheridan broken on my tier list. You're going to see why in this video, why the Sheridan is such an incredibly strong vehicle. Yeah, we got a Sheridan, 57 Heavy... Waffenthedeger, and I'm just going to be pushing my way using my speed boost up the hill. Obviously, speed boost lets me get very quickly into position. There is an enemy waffle, so we're aiming, aiming, and kaboom! There you go, nice shot onto the waffle, and now we're just chilling here. Oh, look, a tank gets spotted onto my side, and yep, 
There you go. That's 681 hit points taken off of my tank. That's right. Now I'm down to 1,200 hit points because the Sheridan was able to come off to my side and get an easy snap into me. There you go. Nice shot into the Emil 2 for 600. We're already at 1,500 hit points. I mean, even though the Badger has good DPM, it wouldn't have, first of all, not have gotten into position this quickly because I have speed boost. And as well, even if it did get into position that quickly, it wouldn't have dealt nearly the amount of damage I did because, obviously, it just doesn't have that 960 AT damage per shot. Now the Sheridan is going to run away because, you know, it's the Sheridan playstyle. Run away from your opponents. Just kind of do that the whole game. So this is the issue with these turretless tank destroyers is you kind of feel useless when you're stuck in a scenario where you can't deal with the Sheridan. This tank is going to sit here. I wanted to get a shell into the Sheridan. I was thinking about snapping that, but I knew that if I did, he would just try and rush me. So right now I'm just kind of chilling. I know that I could get an easy shell in. This guy doesn't penetrate me, which is pretty nice. We're just kind of chilling here. Now I noticed that the Sheridan and isn't looking at me. That guy's like, oh, I'm in cover. So you know what? Suck it. There you go. Nice shot right into the Sheridan. Back up, back up, back up. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, right now, I'm going to pause it and I'll tell you what's going through my mind. This Sheridan is going to try and get past me. So what I'm thinking is I've just got my speed boost back. I'm going to make sure that this guy physically cannot get past me. So I've turned my tank sideways and here you go. He's going to try and get past me, put on my speed boost and there you go. That is exactly what I wanted. I have more DPM than the Sheridan and I have enough hit points to take a shell from him. So this guy has tried to play like a Sheridan, tried to be an annoying playstyle, but even then he still manages to get past me. But at least you can clearly see where that speed boost did give me a massive advantage over the Sheridan. That guy shoots me again, but he makes one crucial mistake. He pushes over to this side of the map and bye bye. Nobody misses you. You'll even notice I type bye in the chat. I was really, really frustrated with that guy. I hate I hate Sheridans. I really do. The fact that a light tank can bring me down to 98 hit points. And that guy played bad. He didn't even play good. If I was in that Sheridan, I easily could have gotten behind me in the E3. And that would have been about a done deal. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the big disadvantages. But because I've speed boost, I was able to kill that Sheridan and come out with a victory. That is where having mobility and that speed boost is a massive advantage over the Badger. And why I will always rate the E3 higher up. It can just do a better job. So now we got the Emil 2 left. And this guy just going to boop slap a shell in for 632 and there you go this game sure we didn't do as much damage compared to the enemy uh or not the enemy but the badger game but we did 4,000, and we still were able to win and do a pretty solid job in all regards so i think the e3 is a better overall tank because of its strengths compared to the badger but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below do you like the badger or the e3 more a lot of you know i hate the badger so it's a pretty easy answer for me but other than that i'll be seeing you in the next one and obviously if you enjoyed today's video please consider smashing that subscribe button down below Bye-bye.